Bible archaeology is perhaps the best way to prove that the Bible is legitimate. Through the years, archaeology and the New Testament have not proven to be rivals, but rather supportive of each other on many different discoveries. When I found out how supported both the New Testament and Old Testament were in biblical archaeology, I was utterly astonished. These are the top New Testament biblical archaeology discoveries. For the first of our New Testament archaeology finds, we will cover the ossuary of Caiaphas. An ossuary is a bone box. Caiaphas was the high priest during Jesus' crucifixion, mentioned in Matthew 26, 57. Was this a real person? <laughs> yes, it was. Archaeology and the Bible continue to support each other. Caiaphas's ossuary, or bone box, was found in 1990 near Jerusalem. Apparently, they were trying to build a water park out there and came across a very ornate ossuary. His name is inscribed on the side of the ossuary. Interestingly, on June 29, 2011, the ossuary of Caiaphas' granddaughter was also found. This find was backed by the Israeli Department of Antiquities. And these biblical discoveries continue to show up year after year. Another find is called Pilate's Stone and is from the famous Pontius Pilate, the governor who crucified Jesus. But how do we know Pilate was a real person apart from the Bible? Pilate has been attested by Josephus, a first century Jewish historian, by Philo, a first century Jewish philosopher, and by Tacitus, a first century Roman historian. Pilate's inscription was found in Caesarea Maritima in 1961. The inscription reads, Tiberium Pontius Pilate, Prefect of Judea. Prefect was a military term used in the Roman Empire. They have also found the ossuary of Alexander, son of Simon of Cyrene. You will remember from Mark 15, 21 that Simon was the one who was honored enough to help carry the cross of Jesus up to Golgotha. Mark 15, 21 says, A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. Was this a real person? Did Jesus really die on the cross and raise again as the Bible says? Yes. Our next find is related to Herod the King or Herod the Great. Now the story of the Herods of the New Testament is interesting in its own right as the New Testament is teeming with mentions of Herod. There is the Herod, Herod the Great, Herod the king who sought the wise men in Matthew chapter 2. There is Herod Archelaus mentioned later in Matthew chapter 2. There is Herod, Herod Antipas who has John the Baptist beheaded in Matthew chapter 14. And there is a Herod, Herod Agrippa I mentioned in Acts chapter 12 and Herod Agrippa II mentioned in Acts chapter 25 who Paul appears to. But let's get back to Herod the Great or Herod the King. The New Testament mentions Herod the King in Matthew 2.16. We have coins with his likeness on them. We have also found Herod's palace at Caesarea Maritima. The late Ehud Netzer of Hebrew University found Herod's ancient tomb or sarcophagus. BBC News even reported on this in 2007. This sarcophagus had been beaten to pieces, which is not surprising if you look into the history of who Herod was. He was not a very nice man. It is quite incredible to read about all the gems from an archaeological study Bible. They have also found coins and busts of Herod's grandson, Herod Agrippa I, mentioned in Acts chapter 12, 22 through 23. Archaeologists have also found numerous coins of Herod's great-grandson, Herod Agrippa II, who was mentioned in Acts 25.13. In Dr. Norman Geisler and Dr. Frank Turek's book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, they note how Luke records 84 historically backed details regarding cities, people, and places. 
So why doubt the 35 miracles that he as an historian also records? Luke's credentials as a historian have proven so accurate that it takes more faith not to believe in the miracle accounts than it takes to believe them. Another archaeological find is called Galileo's inscription, or is also referred to as the Delphi inscription. Galileo was a proconsul. Now, proconsul was an official in ancient Rome who acted on behalf of a consul. His inscription was found in 1905 in Delphi, Greece. The inscription is from Claudius Caesar, who was Emperor of Rome from 41 to 54 AD. The inscription again from Claudius Caesar says, To Galileo, my friend and proconsul. You will remember Galileo mentioned in the New Testament from Acts 18.12. It says, While Galileo was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. This inscription has been dated to about 52 AD. Now this discovery is super important because it allows us to definitively date the Apostle Paul's writings. The proconsulship was generally a one or two year position, which means that Paul was first in Corinth preaching the gospel around 51 or 52 AD. Therefore, we can date his writings of 1 Corinthians as well as give approximations for many of his other writings all between around 49 and 64 AD very soon after Jesus was crucified, which was around 30 or 33 AD. Now, in Matthew 22, 20, Jesus tells the Pharisees to show him the coin they used to pay taxes before he delivers his famous, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and render to God what is God's line. The image that was on this coin was of Tiberius Caesar, who was Roman emperor from AD 14 to 37. Another archaeological find is of Sergius Paulus, who we meet in the New Testament in Acts 13, 6 through 12. Archaeologists have found his inscription around 1996, just outside of Paphos. The inscription reads, Paulus Proconsul. Again, Proconsul was an office in ancient Rome. They have also found another inscription of him in Rome. Another find is from Romans 16.23, which introduces us to Erastus, the city treasurer. Among the ruins that were found at Corinth is this pavement stone, which says, Erastus, the office of treasurer, at his own expense. And then it's cut off, but probably says, laid this pavement. This inscription dates to the first century A.D. In Luke 2.2, we learn about a governor of Syria named Quirinius, who takes a census from Caesar Augustus, who was the Roman emperor from 27 BC to 14 AD. As far as Quirinius, around 1991, in Antioch of Presidia, they found a stone dated to around 11 to 8 BC, which says the name Quirinius. Another documentation of Quirinius was found in Venice, Italy, the Roman soldiers came from Venice, Rome, and other places where Roman soldiers lived. The inscription says, Secundus for the Palestine tribe in the service of the divine Augustus, who claimed divinity, under Quirinius, the legate of Caesar in Syria. It goes on to say that the soldier conducted a census under the order of Quirinius, just as the Bible describes. We are told about Claudius Caesar in Acts 11.28, who again was the Roman emperor between A.D. 41 to 54. Many statues and coins have been found with his likeness. Following Claudius was Nero. He was the Roman emperor from A.D. 54 to 68, who apparently persecuted Christians, burned them, impaled them on stakes, covered them in pitch, and used them as lanterns in AD 64. Nero was followed by Vespasian, whom we also have coins of. He was the Roman emperor between AD 69 to 79. 
Vespasian was also the father of Titus. Now, Titus was the Roman emperor from AD 79 to 81, whom we have a bust of. Now, before Titus became emperor, he led the 10th Roman legion and destroyed Jerusalem and its temple in AD 70, which was prophesied by Jesus in Mark 13, 1 and 2. In 2004, they found the Pool of Siloam in Jerusalem, which is the site of Jesus' miracle recorded in John 9, 1-11. Now let's talk about some of the oldest New Testament manuscripts that we have found. We found the Chester Beatty Biblical Papyri between 1931 to 1935 in Cairo, Egypt, which are three papyri dating to about the year A.D. 200, which contain most of the New Testament. Then, in 1952, in Pawbaw, Egypt, they found the Bodmer Papyrus II, which contains most of John's Gospel and has been dated at between A.D. 150 and A.D. 200. And in 1920, they found what's called Ryland's Papyrus P52, the oldest universally accepted manuscript of the New Testament, which papyrologists have dated to about the year A.D. 125. As you can see, there is a ton of archaeological evidence from the New Testament. Hey guys, these videos take hours and hours to make. Boost my energy up by buying me a coffee in the description section of this video. Thanks so much. And if you want to make educational videos like this, check out the Pictory link below in the description section. We'll see you in that video over there.